People love to play Pokemon for different reasons. Some play for the battling, others play for the story, and some people, some extremely, extremely patient people, play to hunt shiny Pokemon. 30,000? Well, that's a lot. 46,000? Oh, wow, that must have been long. 57, th holy, two, uh, what the f- Finally, almost two years of hunting. Almost f two years of hunting. Two years? Two years for this? <clears throat> uh, anyway, even though I might not have as much patience as some of these shiny hunters, if not all shiny hunters, shiny hunting is still definitely one of the many fun things to do in the Pokemon series. Which has got me wondering, which Pokemon in which game are the hardest to shiny hunt? Well, since I didn't want to be destroyed in the comments by people telling me that I'm wrong, or that I'm not a true shiny hunter, so how would I know? I figured why not get the help of one of the best known shiny hunters on YouTube. Joining me today is Dallas, aka the Supreme Arcanines. Hey guys, Supreme Arcanines here. So I've been shiny hunting a long time now, almost six years on YouTube. And like Alex, I've been wondering what are the hardest Pokemon to shiny hunt for? So instead of getting our own shiny Pokemon, we decided to waste our time researching and figuring out just what are the absolute hardest shiny Pokemon to hunt for. So Dallas, did you honestly random encounter over 46,000 times for one shiny? Yes. Yes, I did. Was it worth it? Are you kidding me? Of course not. That's six months of my life I will never get back. I'm joking. Of course it was. And I'd do it again too. Um, uh, okay. Anyway, so before we get on with the list, let's make some things clear. The amount of research that went into this video was pretty ridiculous. To try and make this list as accurate as possible, we are also taking into account the games that people would hunt in, since Gen 6 had the lowered shiny odds compared to the other generations, and some Pokemon are much harder to hunt in other games. We are also taking into account how long a Pokemon will take to hunt for, any evolution methods to get a specific Pokemon, for example to get a shiny Excelgore or a Scavalier, you'd have to hunt for a shiny Shelmet or Carablast, then trade them to successfully get the shiny, and locations in which you can find a specific Pokemon. We've also excluded all event Pokemon because we want to make sure that this list is Pokemon everyone can hunt right here, right now. For example, the Mew event in Emerald was only accessible in Japan, so that's not something that any other country really has access to without a Game Shark or other cheating device. So, like I said, only Pokemon that are huntable now to everyone will be on the list. And before any of you comment asking me to hunt these Pokemon, I'm gonna have to go ahead and say I probably won't. That's how annoying they are. You've been warned. So with all that out of the way, this is our list of the top 10 hardest Pokemon to shiny hunt. And if you're a shiny hunter watching this video, I dare you to hunt for some of these Pokemon if you haven't already. I dare you. Number 10, baby Pokemon in generation two and three. Ever since the Masuda method was introduced in generation four, breeding for shiny Pokemon has been made a ton easier. However, back in generations two and three, the Masuda method wasn't a thing yet, so it didn't exist. And the only way to get baby Pokemon was through breeding. Just think of how time consuming it already is to breed for a shiny Pokemon and then take away any lowered odds. This makes every single egg have the 1 in 8192 chance of being shiny. And to make things worse, until Emerald, there was no way of increasing the hatching speed of eggs, like having a Pokemon with a flame body or magma armor ability, meaning that even hatching an egg could take the mick. All this made breeding one of the more annoying methods of getting a Pokemon, much more than finding one in the wild, but that was the only way of getting a baby Pokemon. Now this one's by no means terrible, but we're only at the bottom of the list, so the shinies will only get harder to obtain. Number 9. The Gen 6 starters in Pokemon X and Y. Okay, now before you start saying, the starters are so easy to get shiny, you just have to breed them. We're not talking about getting the starters through breeding or friend safari. We're talking specifically about the starters you get to choose at the very beginning of the game. So why are these starters on the list? Well, it's not exactly because they're hard. It's that they're a piss take. The first time you actually get to see your starter is when you throw it out into battle for the first time. But before you can even check if it's shiny or not, you have to go through a cutscene. This is by far the longest gap between saving your game and being able to check your starter in any Pokemon game. Here's what you have to sit through after saving your game. You walk over to your friends, sit down, get introduced to your friends, give yourself a nickname, which if you want to do, you'll have to do every single soft reset, finally pick up your starter, have your friend pick up their starter, receive the Pokedex, get the professor's letter, then as you're walking away, Shauna wants to battle, which then you can finally throw out your starter and see if it's shiny, only to realize it's probably not and have to do it all over. Not including loading the game, 
from the moments where you walk left, the entire cutscene, if you're hitting A the whole time not caring what your nickname is, is a total of almost two whole minutes. And if you want to give your starter a nickname, or even nickname yourself, that's going to be even longer. In the time the whole cutscene ends, you could have hunted for a shiny starter in another game at least three times, which would technically make these starters even more time consuming than any other starter trio. I mean, I can just imagine someone who wanted to start their Kalos journey with a shiny starter, only to find out the weight that was in store for them. Hey guys, Premarkanites here, and as you can see, I'm playing Pokemon X and Y for the first time, and I will be going for a shiny starter. Um, I'm also hunting Zekrom on the side. I'm not really sure why that hasn't uh, shined yet. Um, it's almost as if it can't be shiny, but I know that this one won't take as long. Um, I'm super excited, but let's get into it. Holy freaking Shinx, guys. That is one of the longest cutscenes I've ever sat through. Uh, I don't know if I can do this. I don't think I can do this hunt. I'm sorry. I have to play the game. I can't do this. Number 8. Frostlass or Gallade in Generation 4 and 5. These two are sharing a spot because they're equally hard to get. So in order to get a Frostlass or Gallade in the first place, you first need to find a Snow Runt that's female or a Ralts that's male. Then just evolve them by exposing either to a Dawnstone. Seems simple enough, right? Well, the thing that lands these two on the list is that both their pre-evolutions have a 50-50 gender ratio. This means that if you do end up finding a shiny snow runt, it has a 50% chance of being male, which is fine if you're hunting for a shiny Glalie, but it's not so good if you're hunting for a shiny Frostlass. So taking into account snow runt's gender ratio, this basically means that getting a female shiny snow runt is double the odds of a normal shiny, making Frostlass's shiny chances in Gen 4 or 5 1 in 16,380. Now, if you're hunting for either Snow Runt or Ralts in Generation 6, or maybe you're just using Masuda Method, these odds will obviously be raised. However, hunting for either Shiny Frostlass or Gallade in Generation 4 or 5 is not only significantly harder, but what really lands these two a spot in this list is that they're basically twice as hard to get as any normal Shiny. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Shiny Snow Run, Shiny... Number 7. Unknown exclamation mark and question mark in heart gold and soul silver. Now for the most part, these two specific unknown symbols are just about as hard to get shiny as any other Pokemon in heart gold and soul silver. That is, when you unlock the area that these two specific symbols are found. And how do you unlock this area? Well, you know, it's nothing much. Um, all you have to do is catch all 26 other unknown symbols. Having to catch 26 unknown is just about as strenuous, if not more, than getting a shiny Pokemon alone. And you're not even allowed to start catching them right away. First, you have to complete the four slide puzzles. This not only unlocks all 26 letters, but gives you the unknown report allowing you to start catching them. Which you're gonna regret because catching all 26 unknown is a freaking nightmare. Having to find each individual letter can range from a 10% to a 3.8%. 3.8% to find all 26 letters and still have to catch them. This doesn't include the possibility of having to go back to the Pokemon Center to heal or to stock up on more Pokeballs at the Pokemon. This could possibly be one of the most grinding things you have to do in any Pokemon game. Besides hunting any of the shinies on this list, of course. And when you finally catch all 26 different unknown symbols, only then do you finally get to hunt for a shiny unknown question mark or exclamation mark. But would you really want to? You've wasted all this time just to be able to attempt hunting for a shiny unknown that's slightly differently shaped than the previous 26 that you've already caught. What a waste of time. Hey Alex, I just looked up Unknown in the Pokedex 3D Pro app, and did you know that the correct pronunciation is actually unknown? Fuck you! Number 6. Milotic in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. If you've ever tracked down a Feebas and then decided to evolve it in these games, then you'll know why it's on this list. First off, you're gonna want to find where to catch a Feebas, which in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald can only be done in Route 119. Where on Route 119, you may ask? Well, out of the hundreds of tiles that you can fish on, Feebas can only be found on a total of six tiles. That's right, six out of hundreds of tiles. And these Feebas spots aren't the same every time, they're random. And you're not even guaranteed to find a Feebas once you start fishing in the correct spot. These things are ultra rare, literally. 
you still have a chance of fishing for other Pokemon that aren't Feed Bass, meaning that you have to waste time fishing on every individual spot around 5 or even more times, just to make sure the spot that you're on is a Feed Bass tile or not. And then, when you finally find a Feed Bass spot, you still have to keep fishing until you find a shiny one, while at the same time hoping that you don't land a shiny Carvana instead. And even if you're so lucky enough to even find a shiny Feebas and catch it, you're still not done there. Evolving Feebas in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald is said to be one of the most annoying and time-consuming methods of evolution in any Pokemon game to date. So you can imagine getting a shiny one being one of the most daunting tasks in these games. The reason being, you have to force feed it blue Pokeblocks or berries in order to maximize its beauty, which can become extremely tedious. But once that's finally done and you level it up once, you'll finally have your shiny Melodic. Unless you find a shiny Carvana instead, because even if you find a Feebas spot, the chances of you actually hooking a shiny one are still insanely Low. Number 5. The Generation 1 Legendaries from Red, Blue, and Yellow. This is a pretty weird case. So believe it or not, you could actually shiny hunt in Generation 1. In the past, shiny Pokemon were determined by their stats, meaning that if you got a Pokemon with a specific value in their stats, and then transferred them to Pokemon Gold, Silver, or Crystal, that Pokemon would be shiny. You couldn't tell if it was shiny in Generation 1 since shinies weren't introduced until Generation 2. However, if the Pokemon you caught in Generation 1 had the correct values in their stats, they would be shiny in the Gen 2 games. Legendaries are among the only Pokemon in Generation 1 that have stats high enough to check their DVs, which technically makes them the only Pokemon that you can shiny hunt in these games. However, just because you're able to shiny hunt them doesn't make it easy. First you need to figure out what the stats need to be, mark them down, and then check them on the actual Legendary, meaning you'll have to catch it every single time. This makes it much more of a hassle to hunt them in this game than any other ones because one, there's no shiny sparkles, and two, the colors don't change, so there's no visual cue as to if it's shiny or not. Nope, the only indicator is if the stats are identical to the ones that you have marked down. And if you mess up just the slightest bit, say you got one of the stats wrong by a digit or two, it's still completely wrong, meaning that the Pokemon won't be shiny when you think it is. And once you send it over to Gold, Silver, and Crystal, the hunt will be over for good, meaning you've lost the shiny forever. There's also all the hassle of transferring a Pokemon from Gen 1 to 2, with link cables and another Game Boy, no wireless. And like Dallas said, if any of the numbers of the stats were off by even one point, and you've already transferred that Pokemon to Generation 2, that's it. That shiny legend has gone for good. Unless of course you want to reset your Generation 1 game. Number 4. Shiny Chansey in the Leaf Green Fire Red Safari Zone. So everybody knows how annoying it is to catch Pokemon in the Safari Zone. There's no actually battling the Pokemon, so when you encounter it, all you can do is throw a Safari Ball, throw bait, or a rock. Now this can be tricky. Bait makes it more likely that the Pokemon will stay, but is less likely to catch, while Rock makes the Pokemon less likely to stay and more likely to catch. So what could be more annoying than catching a Pokemon in the Safari Zone? trying to catch a shiny one. More specifically, a shiny Safari Zone Chansey. Not only does Chansey have a pretty low 30 capture rate, making it one of the most difficult Safari Pokemon to capture, with the high chance of fleeing, but the chance to find a Chansey, depending on what area of the Safari Zone you're looking in, is between 1 to 4%. So you've not only got to hope and pray that the shiny that you run into is the shiny that has the 1 to 4% chance of appearing, but you've also got to catch it. Which is kind of a problem with Chansey, being arguably the hardest Safari Pokemon to catch. In fact, every single person that's posted a video of them finding a shiny Chansey in the Safari Zone has also failed it. What are the chances of that? Pretty ridiculous because they're stupidly tough to catch. And no, I'm not sorry for that joke, but I am sorry for the poor souls who've had to go through this. So in the off chance that you actually run into a shiny Chansey, you've got to throw a ball at it, but it'll probably break out or run away. So to keep it from fleeing, you've got to throw bait, but you can't really catch it unless you throw a rock. But you can't throw a rock because it'll flee, so you've got to throw bait. But if you throw bait, then it's too hard to catch. So what do you do? You throw as many Safari Balls as you can and pray that it stays in that freaking ball. That is until you run out or it more likely runs away. Yep, shiny Safari Chansey is a nightmare. Number three. Roaming Legendaries. We've all had trouble with roaming Pokemon at one point. 100% chance to flee, hard to find, and of course, very hard to catch. So just imagine trying to catch a shiny one. Now the only plus side to shiny hunting a shiny roaming legendary is that once the Pokemon is shiny, it'll stay shiny, which is good. 
Too bad soft resetting for this shiny is one of the most tedious things in a Pokemon game ever. Imagine soft resetting for a Kalo starter in X and Y, but worse. And on top of that, put the full odds of 1 in 8192 instead of half that that you see in Generation 6. How roamers work is they basically move every time you move. And you can even track them, but the problem is every time you seem to get close to it, it always jumps to a new route. The fastest way to go about this is to just cross over where routes change over and over until it ends up in the same one that you're in. Then you can encounter it and see if it's shiny, but if it's not, you have to do it all over again. Yeah, I bet that one cutscene from X and Y is looking pretty good right now. It wouldn't have been as bad if you were able to save right before you faced the legend, and it didn't move if you soft reset it. But every time you restart the game, it moves to a new area, and it could go anywhere on the map. Having to wait for this legendary to come to the routes that you're on can sometimes take up to 10 or even 15 minutes. That's a 10 to 15 minute soft reset. And if it's shiny, great, but you still gotta catch it. Although using a Master Ball is perfectly reasonable. And if it isn't shiny, do all that shit again. This might just be one of the longest soft resetting anyone has to do in a Pokemon game ever. Number two, Vespaquin in generation four. Remember how annoying we said Frostglass was to get shiny because it's basically twice as hard to get as any other? Well, if you thought that was difficult, take a look at Vespaquin. It's basically the same case as Frostglass, but worse. Much, much worse. For those of you who don't know, Vespaquin can only be obtained by evolving a female Combi. How do you get a Combi? Well, in Diamond, Pearl and Platinum, it's done by smearing honey on a yellow tree. You wait 6 hours, and then you'll find a Pokemon on the tree. 20% of the time, that Pokemon is Combi. And only 12.5% of the time, that Combi will be female. So basically, with Combi having the 12.5% chance of being female, compared to the 50% chance of Snowrunt being female, that makes a female Combi 4 times harder to get than a female Snowrunt. And overall, 8 times harder than a normal Shiny. So if you were to Shiny Hunt for a female Combi in Gen 4 and 5, at full odds, the chances of you getting a legit Shiny Combi is 1 out of 65,536. That is absolutely absurd. Now, with Masuda Method, these odds can be raised. However, the fact that Vespaquin is eight times harder to get than any other shiny Pokemon makes it, for a lot of people, the most difficult shiny Pokemon to get in any Pokemon game. However, there is one other Pokemon that Alex and I both think that despite Vespaquin's absurdly low shiny odds, just beat her to the punch of being crowned the hardest Pokemon to shiny hunt. And finally, the number one hardest Pokemon to shiny hunt is... Shiny Garatina. Oh my god, guys. Shiny Garatina at 1,950 soft resets. A shiny Giratina has appeared. Holy shanks, guys. Look at that thing. Shiny Giratina. I cannot believe I, I have a shiny Giratina. What the f***? Guys, my game just froze. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Look at that thing. And it's lost. I can never get it back. Alright guys, this is Supreme Arcanine signing out. <laughs> oh, that video was great. One of my favorites of yours, Dallas. <laughs> Don't you agree? Dallas? 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 Wait, hang on. Dallas? Oh. Oh god. Oh no, Dallas. Dallas, Dallas, come on, snap out of it. Dallas, 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 Dallas. Okay, seriously though, our real pick for the number one hardest Pokemon to shiny hunt is the Pokemon Ranger Manaphy. So when I first pitched this top 10 to Dallas, I was certain that Vespaquin was going to be number one. But, when I found out about this monstrosity of a shiny, I think my head almost exploded at the thought of if I was crazy enough to even attempt to shiny hunt this thing. So here's how you get Manaphy in the first place. In Pokemon Ranger, you first have to play through the game to unlock a password screen. From there, you enter a password to unlock a new mission. Once you complete that mission, you'll be able to recover a Manaphy egg and transfer it to Pokemon Diamond or Pearl. That doesn't sound so bad, right? Well, it isn't really, but here's why Manaphy will make you want to pull your hair out more than any other shiny. Once you've gotten the Manaphy egg in Pokemon Diamond or Pearl, you have to transfer it yet again to another version. This is so that the egg is able to become shiny. But if it isn't, 
that's it. Manaphy's shiny value is determined before you pick it up, which means once you transfer that Manaphy egg, you've got one shot to hope and pray that it's shiny. That one shot being one in 8,192. And if it isn't shiny, you can't just restart your Ranger game and do it again. Nope. That would be too simple. The password you get from the mission is a one-time offer, so either you luck out or give up. Having higher shiny odds is one thing, having to wait for a cutscene to finish is another, but to play through a whole game just to get a single 1 out of 8092 chance to hatch a shiny, with failure meaning that you'll have to do the whole thing all over again on a different Pokemon Ranger cartridge, makes the Pokemon Ranger Manaphy the most frustrating, time-consuming, and overall hardest Pokemon to shiny hunt. If you are insane enough to attempt to getting this specific shiny legitimately, good f***ing luck. Now I know that shiny hunters are some of the most patient people on the planet, but is any shiny hunter patient enough to even attempt this shiny hunt? Probably not. And there you guys have it, our picks for the 10 hardest Pokemon to shiny hunt that you can shiny hunt right now if you really wanted to. Please remember that we spent hours, maybe even days, looking into each Pokemon from each game, as well as going back and forth with the order of the list. And it definitely wasn't easy. I know for a fact there will be at least one Pokemon that some people will say that we missed out, but hopefully you'll agree with the list for the most part. A massive thanks to Dallas for joining me today. I had a ton of fun making these videos, so huge thanks goes to Alex the Aura Guardian for having me on his channel. And thanks to you guys for watching, but if you enjoyed this video, it doesn't have to end. These shinies may have been a pain and a half to find, but at least you can catch them. Over on my channel, we counted down 10 shiny Pokemon that you'll never catch. And let me just say, it's tragic. A link to our collab on Dallas' channel will be in the description or on the screen at the end of the video. If you think we possibly missed out a Pokemon that should have been on the list, then I guess leave it in the comments. Hopefully we'll see you over on Dallas' channel if you didn't already come from there. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more Pokemon content in the future, and until next time, thank you so much for watching.